on my channel is all about secondhand shopping. Um, we do not ever talk about trends on here. The reason that we're talking about trends today is that a lot of the pieces that are trending this spring and summer are pieces that I already own. And I wanted to talk about it on here because I want to show you different ways of looking at trends. Sometimes we can see a model presenting a certain trend and we are caught up thinking that that's what we have to look for when there's a lot more options out there for you. You can definitely rework a trend. So that's what this video is about. And I think I'm gonna start with the easiest one, the one that we all can create on our own and that's bleach denim. So number one, bleach denim. Here is my beautiful midi skirt. It's a denim button down midi skirt. I purchased it at the Goodwill a little while ago. It's, um, it says that it's a size 10, but I had my guy, my tailor, trim it down to fit me. I'm mentioning the measurements because I'm going to put this on sale soon, this piece here. And what you have to look out for if you're interested in shopping, um, my Depop, my Poshmark, or my eBay, is measurements when it comes to denim that I have on sale. Because a lot of the times I have to get the denim altered by my tailor. Um, anyhow, so this is a button-down denim skirt. I'm going to put it down here because my arm is hurting. Bleach denim is probably the easiest um, DIY method or the one with the least difficulty um, to create on your own. So this is easy. This one was easy for me because it has buttons. So I was able to just open up the skirt and spray it down with my bathroom bleach um, spray bottle. Very easy for me to do this. If you want to, uh, you can head out to your local thrift store, find a few pieces of denim and practice. Don't just, um, especially if you find a piece that is beautiful on you, that fits you beautifully, you don't want to ruin it. So you want to practice on denim that you don't really care about um, and get your design together and then transfer the idea to the piece that you, that you love. Um, I have a more precise method of bleaching, which I shared with you all a few videos back. I like to take Q-tip and dip it in bleach and then write on my clothing. So again, if you want to use any of these methods, if you have a method that's unique to you, practice is always going to be the best bet to make sure that you don't ruin a piece that you love. Another thing I wanted to share with you, which I'm going to keep reiterating throughout this whole video, is think outside of the box. I have denim belts. Um, I have denim shirts. I can create a denim hair piece, a denim scrunchie if I want to. I I, um, I can use any of those additional denim accessories, spray them down and be on the trend or in the trend. I don't know how to say it. It's not in style because style is not in or out. Style just is. So I don't want to say that. I don't know. You can be, you can follow the trend for the season. Um, you can think outside the box, you know, through accessories, through personalizing accessories. You don't have to just get a top or a bottom or a skirt. You know, it can be, um, you can really broaden your horizons when it comes to trends, um, getting creative. And this is also a great way to build your personal style. So if you're more low key, you can um, find a light wash bleach denim jacket like this one. I bought this one down the shade, I was gonna say down the shady block but down the block at a shady store. I talked about the store all the time. It's just this little store there with no name that sells random pieces of clothing for $5. So this was $5. And the reason that I'm bringing it up is for those of you who don't like to do the OD bleach denim look, um, you can just throw this over an outfit, over a dress, over an outfit of any kind. And it's great for spring. It's very thin. And um, I don't know about you all, but I stay in the museums. I stay in a the theater. And those places have a blasting AC and I get cold right away. My little skinny bones, my little skinny feet, they get cold right away. So I always have a cardigan or a jacket with me. Next up, we have the tie-dye trend. I wanted to show you this beauty, which I've shown you in the past when I talked about my spring blouse collection. Um, I do believe I talked about this one. Oh, God, I love this blouse. So I found this. Um, this is actually a cardigan. I found this one at the Goodwill a while back. It was on the model, and honestly, when something is on the mannequin, it's gone within seconds. So I was surprised that this one was still there. It was nighttime um, when I went to the Goodwill, and it was still there. Anyhow, this actually touches on two of the trends. Ruffles are in trend, very romantic. So um, you have the ruffle trend and the tie-dye trend, but we're going to just talk about the tie-dye trend. Tie-dye is another one that's like bleach denim. We have a lot of liberty and agency to create our own unique looks. Um, this one was a happy find, very unique piece. So this one was perfect for me to show you because it shows you, um, it displays how unique you can go when it comes to tie-dye. What you're gonna see a lot of though this spring and summer is tie-dye silk. And I want you to know and to keep in mind that silk is very expensive. So if you're a fast fashion shopper and you got the funds, well, who am I to tell you how to spend them? 
but if you are a thrifter like me the goodwill the thrift shops they are overflowing with silk you can DIY your own silk blouse. I have a few plain silk blouses. If I wanted to, I can go on YouTube, look up a how to tie dye silk video and um, follow it as a guide. I do not have a piece that I want to sacrifice to, to tie dyeing. I love my silk clothing just the way that it is. So um, for me, my limited options like this tie dye cardigan and my tie dye t-shirt are enough for me. I don't need an abundance of tie dye. But if you don't have any and you want to get crafty with it, go to your local Goodwill again and practice with um, a blouse that you don't really care much about before you, before you alter that blouse that you love so much. Um, yes, it should be very simple. It should be not so difficult to follow. If I find an interesting video, I'll link it to the description below. So here's another tie-dye option. I wanted to show you this silk blouse because of the print. Tie-dye, you can really get creative. There are so many different patterns and I love this pattern. It looks mosaic to me and that's what I love the most about it. It reminds me of the subway art. So on the beige trend, we have these two silk blouses. Um, this one is actually a more recent purchase and I have a funny story about this one. This one is a little older from last summer. A darker cocky color, a lighter cream color. I wanted to show you these two shades. When I think of beige, I think of the nude family. I think of the, uh, the lighter nude family. So again, if you want to shop for a trend and you're trying to be very specific, it's going to be hard. You have to open your mind and work within the vicinity of the trend to rework the trend. Sure, beige is trending, but what is beige? What can we do with beige? How are the ways that we can explore beige, the shadows, the highlights? You know, that's where you find several different colors within one color. You have the lighter cream, like I said, and the, um, the darker khaki color, which to me is just the highlight and the shadow of beige, um, of what beige creates. Anyway, you don't have to think this complex about it. It's just the way I have learned and it's just the way that I am. I'm a painter and I think this is what helps me as well. But, um, but what helps me more than anything is that I know who I am and I know how I like to shop. So if you are forward thinking, then you will think outside of the box a little bit. And it's much easier for me to say, oh, think outside of the box, but I'd rather show you examples and that's why we have these two blouses here. And imagine how fly this one would be if I tie dyed it, but I'm not gonna do that because I love it too much. Um, this actually is a recent purchase of mine. I spotted it at the Goodwill recently. It had two stains on this side here. It had two stains here. And, um, and my tailor, he taught me how to remove oil stains from clothing and so I came home and I made the mix to remove the oil stain which is um, oxyclean and water. I've done this in the past and it's worked beautifully. So this time I did it and I kind of forgot about the blouse so I dipped half of the blouse into the oxyclean solution and of course the stains are gone but it also removed a bit of the color. It was like a whole day that I left it, like 24 hours that I left it, um, this portion uh, dipped into the solution. and it removed the color slightly. And so now this is like a two-toned blouse, which I love because it's still very soft and very pretty. So yes, beige is trending. I think that it's a really soft and beautiful color. Um, it's always gonna be easy, it's always gonna be elegant. And like I said, if you can really um, expand your idea of a trend, then you will expand your options at the Goodwill. And when I say Goodwill, I mean thrift shop. So if you don't have a Goodwill near you, whatever your favorite thrift shop is, that's what I'm talking about. So if you actually want to see something beige, here are my beige silk pants. I love them. I bought them last summer from the Goodwill. They have a pleated um, pleat in the front. And the thing about pleats is that sometimes it's a hit and sometimes it's a miss. I do not like when the pleats create like a bulging um, lower belly area. So I make sure to find the type of pleats that look beautiful on me. And I think that Silk is the best bet when it comes to pleats if you're afraid of the bulging because silk is so fine and thin that it, it won't bulge on its own. Wool has a more firmer um, fabric and it will probably stand, tend to bulge and stay in that bulging shape where silk just flows easily. Um, this actually touches on two trends, the beige, the beige trend and the pant trend. There is a tailored pants and blouse um, combo that's trending for spring and summer. So any of the blouses that I'm gonna show you today go with this beautifully and it will hit on that pants and um, blouse trend.
I've selected this outfit for the floral trend. Um, florals are trending, of course, it's spring. Honestly, florals are gonna be trending for the rest of your life. You can always count and bet on florals, mainly because it's nature. So nature will always be in trend because nature is art and art is style. Um, anyhow, I've chosen these two pieces to pair together for one good reason. I love the way pink and blue look together. Let's talk about the dress first. So this is my floral bata, which means house dress, um, like a like the kind of gowns that you know we all go to the store with, or our moms or our grandmas go to the bodega with. Um, this is that kind of dress. What I love about this dress is, of course, the print. The print looks like it belongs on on a table, on a kitchen table. It's very uh, vintage looking, but that's why I like it. You have the pop, these big popping red florals on it, which is beautiful and eye catching. And if you wear red lipstick, you already know what's gonna happen beauty um this actually touches on two trends there's the this floral print trend and the utilitarian trend these are gigantic big utilitarian pockets within this dress and that's a touch of the utilitarian trend rather than an entire cargo from head to toe um i love it it's still very feminine and still very useful at the same time with the utilitarian pockets i've chosen to pair it with this beautiful blue or turquoise uh silk kimono underneath because it is so beautiful to combine these two colors and i also wanted to talk to you a little bit about the two things well the one thing that can tie two separate prints together in this case as you can probably see already is the gigantic red florals on this one we have these gigantic red roses or what kind of flower is that looks like roses on this one here we have cherry blossoms and this beautiful girl look at her you can see her better from the back isn't she beautiful oh she looks so cute um she's in the front as well and she has like a little butterfly in her hand in the front so gorgeous uh this is a silk chico's kimono blouse chico's is an excellent brand for beautiful blouses i love it i found one a long time ago at the goodwill and i went online and hunted for more because i knew where there's smoke there's fire <laughs> um anyhow so so yes, so these two colors just go beautifully. They create a really stylish look. This blouse paired underneath this uh, house dress cinched at the waist with this denim belt is so stylish. Instant fly, instant confidence. Yes, it is tied together by this big red uh, floral that they both have, but no, you do not require that. What I love the most about mixing prints is the fact that it gives you liberty to not give a damn about anything. You don't want to give a damn about making sense. You just want to wear these two different pieces and your attitude is what ties them together. Your confidence is what makes you look fly. Um, so yes, you can tie two pieces, two totally different prints together by one common source within the print, but no, you don't have to. Actually, when you don't is when you look the coolest in my opinion, is when you just look so confident and so fly, like you threw on anything and you still own it. I love that look, I love that feeling. Um, it, again, it always boils down to confidence. It will always boil down to confidence. So there is a lot of beauty in a set of two totally different pieces that are tied together through one single detail. I have a video dedicated to that if you want to check it out. Um, DIY sets that are kind of linked together through color scheme. I'll add the video. I hope I remember. <laughs> um, but yes, you can create your own sets. A lot of people follow the same color scheme, so you're going to find a lot of different pieces that have the same color scheme and that would create beautiful, interesting mixed print sets. But you don't have to go that route. So the utility trend. Uh, here are a pair of cargo pants, the very representation of utilitarian in my opinion. Uh, these are vintage Carhartt. I love them. They fit me beautifully. They're nice medium dark wash. Um, I found these at the Goodwill recently this past winter. They are high rise. They fit my shape beautifully. I am so, so happy that I found these. They fit me gorgeous. Um, this can be styled, of course, in a million different ways. I just wanted to let you all know that there are a bunch of cargo pants at the Goodwill. I also have a vintage light wash that I am selling. Here are my vintage light wash Lee cargo pants. I am selling these on my Depop, eBay, and Poshmark. Um, again, please pay attention to the measurements. These were tailored, so they're not the size that they say they are, which is... 30 by 30 the length is still 30 but i um 
anyway i'll add the information on the on the posting on the sale post uh, but yes there are a lot of these babies at the goodwill if you find it hard to um to find these at your local thrift store go online go on ebay um, if you want to shop from me i would appreciate that but make sure you read those measurements first anyhow this is probably the easiest coolest way to wear the utilitarian style i um i wore these all summer last summer like these are my go-to pants last summer shades of the sunset or the sunrise are trending um that's to say rust shades orange shades purple shades which is why i chose this blouse to show you it has all of the colors of sunset um this is another chico's silk blouse i don't remember which was my first chico blouse from the goodwill but that's how it happened i found the chico blouse at the goodwill it was the it looked like art like this one here and i went online and i bought like five more from ebay i just can't remember which one was the first one that i saw um anyhow i do believe that this one was an ebay purchase and it has all the colors of the sunset so this touches on the trend beautifully in a nice artistic way you see this gorgeous woman walking towards a few huts um in the front we have a dog there or a cat I wanted to show you the, the sunset trend through this blouse because this blouse displays all of the colors. So this shows you just how vast your options are when shopping for the sunset or the sun, I think it's called sunshine trend or the sun, sunshine shade trend. <laughs> um, anyway, you have purple, you have orange, you have rust, you have red. All of the colors that you see in a sunset is what you have to work with. So you can go to the Goodwill and find a purple skirt, an orange blouse, a yellow blouse. You have a lot of options. Um, of course, there's accessories as well, but I just wanted to show you all of the options here. Don't just think burgundy and orange. That's what we confuse for a sunset, but the sunset is actually glorious. It has many more colors. Uh, crafty crochet pieces are trending and i wanted to show you this beauty because it's just so gorgeous this is a very light knit uh crocheted cardigan with very beautiful tiny silver beadwork um this is so delicate that i've never worn it i'm always afraid that if i wear this i'll end up at a bar somewhere some girl's earring or or purse will get caught on it she'll tug and ruin my blouse ruin my cardigan um and so i'm afraid to wear it and that's why i've never worn it so it's beautiful this is the kind of piece that levels up your outfit i think i think that if you throw this over a dress a silk dress for example you'll look like it's your birthday like it gives your outfit a special look um anyhow i have three different forms of crochet and i just wanted to show you this one here with beading um crafty crochet with beading and i have two more so let me get them out now so the next crafty crochet piece is this cropped, uh, cropped crochet cardigan. It goes, in my opinion, beautifully over a silk um, slip. I modeled it for you all in my winter style guide when I purchased it over the winter. Um, with, I think it was, oh no, I paired it. I actually paired it alone on top and with a uh, DIY pin because it actually doesn't come with any buttons for closure. Um, and my silk skirt, it looked beautiful it showed a lot of skin and it looked sexy it looked elegant at the same time this is actually a really beautiful piece so this is my floral uh crochet top it touches on three trends it touches on the floral trend the crochet trend and the tie-dye trend you see those little flowers there in the center they have a tie-dye look to them um i purchased this one from ebay or no etsy a little while ago maybe maybe three summers ago Anyhow, it's a very happy find. I mainly wear this one, to be completely honest with you, around Pride. Um, I love to dress up for Pride the entire week I'm dressed up. So this one always comes out during Pride. So there's actually four for the crafty crochet pieces. This is a crocheted pop top purse. It was handmade by the women of Pros of Africa. I purchased it a few years ago. The nun um, from Pros of Africa, Sister Rosemary, was on the Colbert Report. She talked about the girls. She talked about the women that create these bags, the quality of the bags. I was definitely intrigued and inspired. I went online and I purchased this one, which is the Teresa, I think named after Mother Teresa, for $150. It's beautiful. It's worth every penny. It's been years and look at it. It still looks brand new. I just wore it yesterday when I went to the movies with my husband. It's gorgeous. It's very crafty, crochet, and it's a uh, purchase with a purpose and I couldn't leave it out. 
So lace is trending and here's my representation of a touch of that trend. Um, you all might recognize this dress from a video that I dedicated to it a while back. And if you see that video, you'll see this denim jacket that I just showed you here in that video. It was a really windy um, spring day and I'm glad I had that jacket with me because forget about it. I would have been freezing my ass in Central Park. Um, anyway, so yes, yeah, so this is a beautiful pink gradient silk slip that I wear as a dress freely and confidently. Um, here we have a touch of lace. You see the lace accent going through the pink panels. It's a really pretty nude light color and um, it's just divine. It's so feminine and romantic. That's another thing. When you want to think, when you think of these things that are, are trending like ruffles and lace, that's linked to romance. So from romance, you can just Google romantic movies or romantic um, artwork and let that inspire you when shopping as well. That's a really good tip. Anyhow, yes, so here's my touch of lace and a touch of the trend. So you can go out there and find a dress completely covered in lace. That's beautiful. But just like I said, think of the variants. Think in a brighter scope so that you have more options. Think lace accents. You can also create lace accessories. If you go to the local fabric store, you can find um, a piece of lace and you can use it as a, a cinch to your dresses. You can use it as a belt. You can use it as a hair scrunchie or a hair bow if you want to leave it hanging off your ponytail, something really pretty and feminine. Um, the options are endless, but yeah, you can create your own when it comes to lace. Lace is probably really easy to find at the fabric store. So speaking of romantic trends, here is the ruffle trend. This is a beautiful teal bluish cardigan. I showed you this one in the in the winter time in a style guide because of the color. I love pastels in the winter. I think they add a softness to winter. Anyhow, ruffles are trending and I wanted to show you this cardigan in particular because a lot of times, you know, we think, oh, it's spring and summer. I, I have to look for tank tops and shorts. But no, um, you all, you know, I take the MTA every day or, you know, often. The MTA, the AC is on full blast in the spring and summer. It is freezing in the train stations. The museums are cold. The movie theaters are cold. You're going to need a cardigan. Um, you know, I, I love a cardigan. I love to keep warm. So I have a bunch. And this is probably one of my favorites. It's so beautiful. One piece pantsuits are trending and here's my one piece silk pantsuit. I got this one from the Goodwill maybe two years ago. Beautiful, like 12 bucks maybe. Um, it was, it looks brand new to me. It looks completely stainless and without any markings. Um, the only thing is that it was missing the belt that it came with. Um, that was just an opportunity for me to get more creative. I can now use any belt that I want with this. I can create a belt for it if I feel like it. Like I said, I can buy a piece of lace and cut it and cinch it around the waist. Um, anyhow, it's very comfortable, very beautiful, and, um, and found at the Goodwill, believe it or not. Gorgeous. So rouged dresses are trending, and we have my representation here in this beautiful vintage silk pink dress. Um, I want to show you two different versions of rouge if you don't like vintage, um, because actually we're going to get a lot of rouge and vintage style. As you see here, the bunching of the pleats here, that's rouged. That's where you get a lot with vintage clothing. Sometimes, most of the time, you'll find rouged in the shoulders, um, in the tailoring work of shoulders of most uh, blouses and dresses. So if you're not into vintage, try looking at blouses that have the rouging on the shoulder. I think that's beautiful and feminine and not too vintage. Um, here we have two representations of rouging and I love it. This is a beautiful silk pink dress. I found it the other day for six bucks. Very happy that I did. It looks so vintage. I feel like I can wear it to church with a fascinator. So fringe trimming or feather trimming or crystal trimming, as long as you're trimming and your hem has a fun little uh, quirky detail, it's in style. Um, you all know how I say my closet is 99% thrifted. This here is the 1%. This is that one piece or one of the maybe 10 pieces that have remained from my regular shopping days. This is a fringed cardigan from H&M. I stopped shopping at H&M really because the quality of the clothes is so poor, in my opinion. If you put a t-shirt in the machine, it's gone. If you put a pair of pants in the machine, it's gone. It just can't uphold the test of time and it's to me, overly priced for being such poor quality. Anyhow, this did 
uh, this piece here did stand the test of time and it's actually one of my most practical pieces in the summer I use this one here as a cover-up mainly I wear very tiny tiny bikinis I like to throw it over my bikinis in the um, in the summer uh, for this look though putting this together and creating an outfit it was very simple. I just grabbed one of my silk skirts, a lace bra, and cinched it at the waist with the belt. And we have this very cool, very stylish uh, fringed silk combo. So that brings us to the end of our video. I, um, I hope that you found this video useful. It's so important to me that you find these videos useful because aside from sharing my style with you all, um, I just want to help you. I want to help you learn to shop. I think it's so important to learn to shop, learn to break down a trend, learn to expand upon the trend, learn to work within the vicinity of a trend and you, you will find yourself developing a really gorgeous personalized closet. Um, good luck to you. Like I said, if you're looking for specific pieces, go online first. I think that online shopping is better for specific searches because you have the option of putting in every single detail in the search engine and you do not have that option at the Goodwill. At the Goodwill, all you have is hours to spare and to spend. Um, anyhow, good luck to you. Have a beautiful day and I'll talk to you very soon. Hit your notifications, hit your like, hit your subscribe and all that stuff. Um, show me some love. I'll be working hard on these. I'll talk to you soon and have a nice day.